Whenever I show someone at work how I use Keyboard Maestro to automate parts of my work, the most common reaction is laughter. <laughs> I think part of it is a realization of just how nerdy I am, and I appreciate that. But then as I show them kind of more and what I do with it, it really people really seem to be impressed with how much you can do with this app. And I've wanted to make a video for a long time about Keyboard Maestro and showing off how I use it. And I wasn't quite sure how to address this topic because there's so much here. I don't use nearly all the functionality of the app, so I don't want to do like a full walkthrough of the app. I don't necessarily want to do a review of it. I think it's great. I wanted to show you some actual use cases that I have with the app. So I, I see a lot of videos with stuff like this that show automation on devices, and they show these kind of generic examples, I feel like, oftentimes. And you're like, I'm not going to do that, and I don't think the person making this video even uses this. They're just using it as an example. So what I'm going to do is show you most of the things that I use at work. Specifically, I'm going to copy them from my work computer where I can't show you stuff, but onto my personal device, I'm going to make some mockups that show you exactly kind of what things I do with Keyboard Maestro. I think it's really cool. Hopefully this will serve as inspiration on how to use the app better if you've already purchased it. And if you haven't purchased it and have been wondering, is it for me? Like, what are some actual use cases for it? Hopefully this will help with that as well. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the screen share. Okay, I'll show you how some of this works in a second. But again, this isn't a tutorial. It's just giving you an idea of what sort of things I do. Uh, so basic text expansion is part of it. So I just do at at to do my work email. Uh, I can do some credit cards. So I actually use a lot of test credit card numbers in my testing and my work uh, day to day. Uh, and so I do uh, semicolon V to do Visa, do an M to do MasterCard, Discover, and Amex. Oops, a little quick on that one. Uh, the Amex one, there we go. So that's how I kind of enter those easily throughout the day. There's also some other stuff like if I do DD date or DD eight, uh, then I can see the date formatted how I need it. So I just need this every once in a while to uh, create something. So I may do something like a note in drafts, for example, and I could do uh, daily notes, or actually here's a better one. Uh, we'll do meeting notes and then date. There we go. And so now I have my meeting notes uh, for this date and that's uh, documented and I can just go from there. So those are some of the easy, simple text expansion things uh, that you can do. There's tons of other apps that do this, but I use Keyboard Maestro already. So this is just one less app I need to have installed. But let's do some more advanced stuff, right? So let me shoot on over to here. So we have a lot of test sites that we log into, and these have just universally known uh, simple logins, and these are not used anywhere else. You definitely do not want to use your actual username and password for this, but these test accounts, it doesn't really matter. And so what I do is I have this basically super shortcut that I have. So it's uh, control, option, and command. I hit all three of those, and then I have three different users I log into, and I have those mapped to Q, W, and E. So Q logs me in to the admin user, the secondary user is with W, and then the third user is with E, that's limited user. And what it's doing here, uh, it's going pretty fast, so you can't really see it, but it's typing out the username, it's hitting tab, it's typing out the password, it's hitting enter, and then it's uh, that's, that fills out the form, so it logs me in. So whenever I'm on one of my login pages, I just hit that, and it goes. Now here's kind of a wild one. So me and my team work in collaboration in uh, Google Docs to write our release notes. So we do like blog posts to give more details on what's going on. And so here's, you know, it's, it's not real text, but uh, basically once we're done, we copy the post and then we go over to our blogging system, which is not ghost, but is just what I have available to me right now. We go to new post. And then here's the cool thing is I'm just going to hit one keyboard shortcut and I'm going to get something really cool. So I'm going to hit my super keys, my three keys, and then B. And so there we go. So it made a headline for me with a specific date. I'll show you how we get that date in a second and then release notes. And then it pasted everything I had in from Google Docs. So boom, there's my post. I can just publish it right away and it works. So that one's really cool. Let me show you actually how that one works because that's a bit of a rabbit hole. So if I go over to Keyboard Maestro, and uh, this is a really advanced one, so stick with me. Uh, but yeah, I've got blog post here, and I'm going to expand this view a little bit so we can see more of it. Uh, it doesn't look that complicated, right? So I hit the hotkey, which is those keys with B, and then I 
have the mouse click on a found image. So I have post title. It's really small there, but you should be able to see it. Uh, post title looks for that on the page. It clicks there and then it does a macro. So macros are what all of these shortcuts are. And so it says get next release date blog. So what's that? So let me pull that up. Uh, I'm going to do get next release date blog. Now this one's more complicated. <laughs> so this one is doing some variable stuff and some date logic. And so basically, again, this is not a tutorial, but in short, I'm finding what's the next Tuesday and what's the next Thursday. And it's using some date time logic to figure that out. And then it's comparing the two and is figuring out which one is sooner. So if Tuesday is sooner, then we're going to create a variable called next release blog uh, that has the value for the next Tuesday uh, formatted like this. So year, month, day. And then if it's not, then we can assume Thursday is, so it'll be those. And basically this is because in my company, we deploy uh, these releases on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we always write these blog posts before the next one. So it's after the Tuesday. So we always post them on Wednesday or Monday, the day before one of these. And so uh, this is basically how I determine what's the date for the release that we're doing. So anyway, we figure that it, and it spits out next release blog. If I go back to the blog post, I can see, okay, so we ran this thing. That variable next release blog is then entered uh, when we type. So we type in the date we get, space release notes, we tab down and we paste in. And so again, that's what you would have seen here. So if I delete the whole post and start over and do it one more time, you can kind of see that, ah, well, ghost kind of screwed up there. So let me try it again. There you are. And so now we have that and that all worked well. Uh, I'm not sure why Ghost didn't like these headings, but it didn't. So that's just a little little quirk of Ghost. But then there's some other stuff I can do that's pretty, pretty advanced. So I have some forms that I have to fill out. And so basically I need to like say, mark this as a feature, put my name and then write a note that says testing complete. I have a shortcut that lets me do that. Here's a crazy one uh, that's kind of linking the multiple actions together. You saw earlier how I can go to a login page and I can just hit a keyboard shortcut to log in as that user. Well, I can also do this. So let's pretend this is a terminal. I have this uh, script that basically spits out a unique URL, but it takes me to a, just the same login page every time. And so what I can do is I can hit my uh, super keys and then T it's going to select the text. It's going to open the login page. That would be unique. And then I get this pop-up that says, who's logging in? Admin, secondary, or cancel? So I'll do secondary. And so it pastes in the name and I'm logged in as secondary user. And so again, that's kind of one of these things where I go into, uh, I've got login user A, right? So this is the thing I showed you where it types the user tab types the password and hits return. That just fills out the form. And then this, uh, where is it? Um, da, 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 da. Log into account, here we go. So this one, it basically opens Chrome if it's not already open. This would be the terminal in uh, my real work. It does another find image. It double clicks and drags. So it double clicks at the center of this image, uh, which is the start of the URL. It drags 500 points to the right, lets go, and then copies it, opens a new tab in Chrome, pastes it into the address bar, hits return to load the page. That prompt comes up that says who's logging in. Uh, it says uh, admin, secondary, or cancel, and that'll just cancel you out. And then based on the result of that, if you say admin, then we log you in as admin. And then I actually have a alert throwing here that says, you did it, congrats. I don't need that, so I'll just hit delete. Uh, or it will log you in as user B. So you can use some if statements. There's some really advanced stuff here. Um, there's also the ability to, uh, I like to load up some stats pages. I like to see stats just at a glance. And so I have my super keys and then S for statistics and it loads a few pages. And I have it loading Google Analytics right here for a site, as well as Twitter Analytics. Obviously these are gonna be real things uh, when I actually do it at work, but it lets me pull up some dashboards super quickly and find information. And yeah, that's kind of all the things. Um, there's more obviously I can do. So for example, this is bold text. Uh, and if I want to copy it, I can obviously just do command C to copy to my system clipboard, but maybe I want to do it as plain text. And so then I have my super keys and then C and then it copies it. And then I also have it throw a notification that says converted to plain text. And then it shows me what I just copied. So that makes me know that I have it as plain text in my clipboard. So that is an awful lot. Uh, again, I didn't really show you how to do all of this. Uh, none of it is super hard. The things with like show my email, super simple. You just say, when I type this, I want it to insert this by typing. Super simple. When I want to copy plain text, which I just showed you, 
I have the shortcut. I want it to run the system copy. Then I want it to set the system clipboard to text. So it just takes the clipboard and does it as text. And then I show you a notification with whatever you just did. So there's tons more you can do. I didn't do a good job of showing you exactly what you can do, but this hopefully gives you an idea of what's possible and some more real world examples of what you can do. Again, this is a subset of what I have, but I kind of have the system with like these super keys and then specific letters that always do the same thing uh, that I think is pretty uh, intuitive for me at least. Uh, no one else will be able to sit down to this computer and figure it out, but you can start to build out a system one thing at a time and that's super, super nice. But yeah, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching.